What's up guys? It's Steve Cardenas, aka Rocky the Red Power Ranger, and you are watching Smart Tank Revolution. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Smart Tank Revolution, where we always kick out it to. I am your solo host tonight. Um in a very excited solo host, not because I'm solo, but because of what my wrestling eyes and brain were just treated to, Joey Business. And in case you've been living under a rock, tonight is Saturday. I believe it's June 17th. It is the first inaugural edition of AEW Collision. It is the SmackDown to their Raw and the counterpart to Dynamite. It is going to be their second flagship show and treated as such, not more, not more of a rampage. It's going to be a secondary showcase. And basically, if you don't know, this was created as a um, pretty much a favor for everyone involved in Brawl Out at All Out and separating the rosters. It's a soft roster split is what they're saying. So uh, I'm just going to focus on the main thing today. That pretty much what everyone, myself included, was tuning in to watch. Uh, Donnie, if he wants, can recap the entire show. I'm just going to focus on the energy and the big return. And that return, of course, was none other than CM Punk. Mr. Pepsi Phil himself. And man, what a return it was. I kind of wish that they build this as the second coming because it. I was worried at first that it might not live up to the return he had on Rampage a couple years ago when he made his debut at AEW, but that was absolutely not the case. The energy was crazy. The crowd was rabid and he was ready to go. And it was very interesting. Um, he came out, you know, fierce and determined with a purpose walked to the ring, soaked in the adulation, and he just started. And we knew from the other promos that he said that he had something to get off his chest, a lot of things. And it was going to be interesting because it's a live mic. It's CM Punk. And Tony Khan has way more goodwill than Vince McMahon with his talent He or Triple H. He does not, you know, he doesn't micromanage and he just kind of goes with their gut and says, okay, whatever you feel, go. And if you think it's qualified, let's do it. And that can be good or that can be bad. But in most instances, it always makes for great TV. And that's what we got once again. Great TV. So you knew Punk was going to have a little bit of something to say. And it was interesting because he came out with a pair of wrestling boots with the laces tied around his neck, draped over his shoulders. And he came out with a, um, a drawstring sack, which looked very heavy. And obviously, you know, it only... Yeah, it doesn't take a genius to figure out what was in that sack. It certainly wasn't Thumbtacks or Jake the Snake's uh, Snake Damien. So I didn't think that was going to be addressed, but I was a little surprised. So he goes into the promo and he starts with, you know, I am here. I am back. And I'm here because of smart wrestling fans like you. And because of that, this is the only place. This is the only place he wants to do business. And he alluded to that and he said, this is a pro wrestling business and you have to do business. And sometimes people don't want to. And he said he basically tried to make amends and, you know, he's tired of being nice. He's like, I've been nice. And if you think, you know, you saw me nice before, he's like, well, that's it. And he pretty much laid down the poop and he said, you know, he said, I'm the biggest draw in this company. I'm the biggest name. The checks reflect it. Uh, the promos reflect everything reflects it. He's the biggest draw, bar none, and he wants to be treated as such, and that's fine. And he did. CM Punk is really, really great on the mic. Always has been, and he's really good at ad libbing. And I don't know if it was plants, but I think he was ad libbing. He saw a couple cr signs in the crowd, and he said, "That sign there says CM Punk's my hero." He said, "I'll accept that." He said, that sign over there says Pepsi Phil. He's like, sure, you can call me that too. And he said, and that sign over there says CM Junk. And he's like, sure, what the hell, you can call me that. He said, you can call me whatever you want because love me or hate me, cheer me or boo me, you do it because I tell the truth. I've never compromised in my career and I never will. And he said, you always know what you're getting with me. And he's like, and then he did the very clever line that I thought was just a knockout punch. It was a TKO one hit. He said, you know what, David Zaslov, and for people who don't know, David Zaslov is the head of Warner Brothers Discovery, which is the multimedia company that owns TNT, TBS, and many movie properties. 
So therefore, AEW is folded into that. He said, David Zaslov calls me one Bill Phil. And he said, and you know why he calls me that? He said, because in a company full of, no, he said, I am the genuine article, the top draw in a full a company full of counterfeit bucks. Now he delivered it a lot better than I did. But once he delivered that, I was like, damn, that was it. That was a TKO punch. One hit, done. If you're a, a, um, a rap fan and you remember the Nas and Jay-Z beef, that was ether. Scorched them, smoked them, and basically on to different, bigger, and better things. And, um, you know, he said, I think that, you know, there might be some disappointed faces in the crowd tonight because you see these boots over my neck and you think that I might be going home. He said, nope, they're symbolic. Basically, he is the best wrestler in this company, bar none. And until somebody is found that can fit his boots or fill his boots, they're going to stay firmly on his feet where they belong. And there was a couple other things said, but you guys go back and watch the promo yourself and do yourself a service. It was really good television. And um, yeah, a great start. The crowd was rabid. They ate it up. I ate it up and we were off to it. I didn't think he was going to, I knew he might throw a little shade. I didn't think he was going to, Scorched them the way he did. That was pretty. They got no retort for that. Um, doesn't matter. Uh, Punk won it. It's over. They just dead it. Buried the horse. Move on because they're only going to look stupid if they try to come back. But the other curious thing he did address was the sack. And he said, you know, 10 months ago when I left, I was the owner of this. Now, he never showed it. And I wonder why he never showed it. I thought it was interesting. So that made me wonder if that was preplanned or just ad-libbed. But he said, until someone pins me or submits me for this, it doesn't matter who walks around with what. I'm the guy. Basically saying, he's still the champ. You guys didn't beat me. No one beat me. No one stepped up. I was out on an injured list. You know, I was on the shelf. And then after his promo, he walked over to the camera and held up the belt in the sack and said, Max, see this? And then walked off, which I thought was curious because it will be Really interesting when MJF gets a chance to rebuttal this. Uh, all in all, off to a really, really hard, I mean, a hot start. And um, yeah, the main event was great. I was worried when it was first announced that you were going to have him do too much too soon on the first night back. But he's in there with some of the best workers in the world, especially FTR. And it was sequenced. It was paced. It was, um, you know, it was booked almost to perfection. It wasn't anything super flashy or crazy. It was just... Really good throwback, old school wrestling. And of course, the win was, you know, Punk gets the win in his hometown after a great sequence with Joe having him in the coquina clutch in the middle of the ring for quite a while, wondering if he was going to tap, but he got saved at the last moment. The crowd went nuts. It was an awesome start to um, Collision. And it will be interesting to see where it goes from here because it started off hot. Now, it should be of note, I'm paraphrasing, I've recorded this one other time and it was just not going right. So, like I said, Donnie can recap the rest of it, but the rest of the show flew uh, flew by. There was no fat. It was really well done. It was really trim. It was lean. And that's what you want. There was only one thing of note that I didn't like. I... The announcers were really hard. They weren't very audible tonight. I don't know if it was the equipment. I don't know if it was the crowd was just overpowering them all night. But even in like rest holds, for some reason, you couldn't really hear the crowd. And I kept forget. I mean, hear the announcers. And I kept forgetting that JR was there as one of the announcers. Um, Nigel McGinnis is a great color commentator. And it's a shame that you couldn't really hear him tonight. So I hope they fix that going forward because I think he makes a really, really good showcase to um, you know, cover the, the in-ring action on um, Collision. But yeah, there's really not much else to say. CM Punk came out, House of Fire, um, scorching promo. Pretty much thought he was going to do that, but it, there was a couple curveballs in there. Very excited to see him back. And as for him in the ring, if you go back and watch it, I think he looked better than his AEW debut. I, he looked more confident. He looked more fluid. He must have been training for at least the past couple months knowing this was coming because he just looked really, really good. Um, I was very worried there was going to be some mistiming, but nothing. He didn't look like he had any missteps at all. And uh, it's great to see him back. And I think after so many starts and stops, we are finally off 
to the summer of punk.